What's up YouTube? Samurai Jack here. It's that time of year again. Kids Choice 2015, March 28th. And I figured, hey, why not do the votes, check the nominees, and share my thoughts on the nominees, whether they be good or bad. We start things off with Favorite Kids Show. Nominees are Austin and Owie, Dog with a Blog, Every Which Way, Nikki, Ricky, Dicky, and Don, Jesse and Henry Danger. Now, I haven't seen much any Austin and Howie other than, you know, some commercials. But, you know, from times when I, when my small row, my, when my cousin saw this, younger ones, I kind of get the gist. Blonde wants to be a rock star. She makes the lyrics because she's got stage fright, a ridiculous stage fright. Uh, the sister to the Mexican kid from Modern Family's in it. And the red hair's a dumbass. But, eh. Doc with a blog, however, I hated the premise from the start every time I saw the commercials. I mean, a dog with intelligence that, let me remind you, can manage to do this. You know, typing and speaking like a normal human. I get more believability out of Caesar from from the Planet of the Apes reboot because, you know, he went through sound language, then learned to speak. Just wanted to get that out of the way. Every which way I haven't seen, but I just consider it a ripoff of Wizards of Waverly Place. Nikki, Ricky, Dicky, and Don I haven't seen, but from the looks of it, it looks like the Sweet Life series but they doubled the amount of twins and one of them's a chick well a little girl but uh, the title itself it, every time I say it it reminds me of Ricky Tiki Tavi that a uh, story about the mongoose who I believe the author is the same one who made Jungle Book Jesse it's been a while and Henry Danger and it's like an okay show from Dan Schneider ish but, let's see. Out of them, I'm going to have to go with Jesse. Now, favorite family TV show. And boy, at least three, well, a lot of them make me like to do the joke of the Nostalgia Craig. You know, for kids. We got Gotham on Fox. Marvel is Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Speaking of... Modern Family, there's the Mexican actor kid who sisters on Austin and Alley, The Flash, Big Bang Theory, and Once Upon a Time. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in any of my Let's Plays, but uh, there was another reason I was on that long hiatus. My stepdad entered, said I'd like Once Upon a Time when he saw the first episode on Netflix, and then after that I instantly became hooked on it and binge watched all of it by on Netflix at the time by the time they were starting the Neverland arc and I finished the Neverland arc in time cuz but you know I already saw the Wizard of Oz arc but Big Bang Theory very funny all the sci-fi references and all things nerdy but gonna have to go to but you know you can vote multiple times, but for the sake of this video, once upon a time. Favorite TV actor, we got Benjamin Flores Jr. from Haunted Hathaways, Charlie McDermott from The Middle, Greg Gustin as in the, in the Flash, Ross Wynn from Austin Maui, Jim Parsons, Shel aka Sheldon from Big Bang, Jack Griffin from Thundermans. So let's see, we got Bazinga. Pathetic supervillain with the inferiority complex, as far as I know from the some of the times I saw Thundermans. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one here who thinks Thundermans is just basically trying to is a ripoff of The Incredibles. Benjamin Flores Jr. found a hundred Hathaways. God, I hate the gimmick of he is that he sucks at his ghost power. I mean, it's I mean obviously he's 
I don't know, as far as I know, he's still working on it. You know, like, every time he tries to do something scary, it's like the opposite. Like, he turns into a butterfly or has a princess dress. But, yeah, I'm gonna give the vote to Sheldon, a.k.a. Jim Parsons. And I may actually see him because he's stars as the alien, and from the trailers, he looks... He, it's pretty funny. Like, you know, I'm waving my hand in the air like I do not... Do not just care, or something like that, when the music's playing. Okay, sorry for the long wait. Uh, this computer is a slightly old. It's a Dell from way back in like 2006, but it still works uh, to the best it can. Anyways, favorite TV actress: Chloe Bennett from Agents of the Shield, Debbie Ryan from Jesse, Jennifer Morrison from Once Upon a Time, Laura Marano, Watson and Nally, Kira Kosterin, Thundermans, and Kaylee Kuko Sweetening from Big Bang. Let's see. I haven't seen Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Though I did like the joke Angry Joe did about how every time he... In that episode where apparently Disney bought Angry Joe. That he got it like a thousand bucks for just mentioning Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Like basically becoming Disney Snow out. But you know it, it was pretty funny. Debbie Ryan for In Jesse. I liked her on Sweet Life and on deck and that was kind of the reason I... Stuck around a bit for Jesse and also, yeah, I was a bit stumped on how the heck it, there could have been a crossover with Jesse and the Amazing Spider-Man, cause like on, like the Black Nerd said, live action and animation, no, but at least they didn't do any Smurfs bullshit or Rocky and Bullwinkle for, you know, outdated references. Jennifer Morrison, the savior of Once Upon a Time. Well, you know, she's good in it, and I'm interested in how they're going to do this way to, the latest season where, you know, while I was fast-forwarding the Grammy, Grammy Awards, I saw the commercial where it's like, in order for Maleficent, Crow, the villain, Ursula to have their happy ending, someone has to go dark, and once you know it, she might go rogue. So yeah, that's a twist on the Chosen One thing. Where they go rogue instead of doing what's good. Laura Morano. Well, I gave her credit for her character, but just the stage frights at the beginning was over the top. I mean, come on, what was wrong with, like, uh, I don't know, doing all those stage fright prevention techniques, like, you know, the classic, imagine everyone in their underwear, etc. But, let's see. The perfect hero, as far as I know, from Thundermans. And Kaylee Kugel Sweening. So, gonna give it to Kaylee Sweetening. Favorite cartoon! We got Adventure Time, Phineas and Ferb, Spongebob, Fairly Odd Parents, Teen Titans Go, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now what's interesting is, and something that is worth talking about, and um, let's face it, everyone who's going to do videos like this are going to talk about it. Where's Legend of Korra? It ended, and it, sh it was a great show. I'd obviously prefer Legend of Korra over Teen Titans Go, because let's face it, despite having the original cast from the other show, they just... Uh. For more expansion on it, I would like to direct to you to direct you viewers to Mysterious Mr. Enter, who does the animated atrocities for what he calls Toddler Titans, because, yeah, let's face it, the humor's just childish. Adventure Time... It's still good. Phoenix and Ferb... Well, you know, it's kind of good. Spongebob, well, what it's left to say, it's... 
been long, been on long, long enough for me to be. Again, just to get a little comprehension, I was five when SpongeBob came out, and right now I'm 20, going on 21. Very odd, parents. Uh, well, let's face it, another show that's on too long, and come on, who really loves Sparky? Things that, the dog's annoying. He sounds like an annoying version of Snapchat from the Tough Puppy. But Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like they said in my, in one of my episodes of X-Men Origins Wolverine, hard to remember, I said this and Legend of Korra are the only two, good, two current good shows on Nickelodeon, so gonna have to go with Ninja Turtles while Teen Titans Go can go fuck itself. Anyways, on to favorite books. We got Diary of Wimpy Kids series, The Divergent series, Heroes of Olympus, Percy Jackson's Greek Gods, Fault in Our Stars, and The Maze Runner. Now, all I can say is Diary of Wimpy Kids is only relevant thanks to the movies it's based on. Divergent, well, if you saw the honest trailer for it, it's basically The Hunger Games, but I like to say it's Hunger Games with the guilds of Ravnica in it, because... You know, the way it's talked about, it kind of sounds like certain guilds like Boros, Selesnia, I think Demir, and of course the title being the Living Guild Pact. Speaking of magic, I always joked around with my friends saying Maze Runner would have been better if it had the legendary creatures from the Dragon's Maze because they run the maze. Bazinga. Percy Jackson... Mm. I only saw the one movie and it's meta barely tolerable like you know a twist on the Greek mythology though I prefer the Theros block compared to it but uh, gonna have to go with Diary cuz uh, I don't know now we got most addicting game Angry Birds, Transformers, Candy Crush, Disney Infinity, Skylanders, Minecraft, and Mario Kart. Well, I can say they are pretty much the most addictive games ever. Like, you know, Disney Infinity and Skylanders are basically get various characters to continue the game. And with Candy Crush, well... I'll admit it is pretty addictive, though I haven't... I actually made a challenge where I would not pay a single cent to the game, and right now I'm on level 437. So yeah, that is impressive, though I have to give credit to the fact that they have the wheel for the mobile version, that Wheel of Fortune. Minecraft I haven't played, though my friends keep telling me I should. Mario Kart 8. Um, well, you know, it's Mario Kart, but with some added tricks. Angry Birds, I have not played any of the iterations of Angry Birds, but let's go with Mario Kart. Now we got Favorite Villain. Just gotta wait for the images to load up. So we got Angelina Jolie in Maleficent, Cameron Diaz in Annie, Donald Sutherland in Hunger Games, Meryl Streep in Into the Woods, La Pace, or Passe, however you pronounce it, in Guardians of the Galaxy, and Jamie Foxx in Amazing Spider-Man 2. Now, Angelina Jolie in Maleficent, I've heard she's good looking and portraying Maleficent, it's just the story they did with the movie is really bad. I mean, they kind of went with the Once Upon a Time approach with her with the movie where she's not all bad and blah 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 etc etc but nah Cameron Diaz Annie last I checked I think she portrays the abusive housekeeper or however Annie goes but nah Donald Sutherland Hunger Games as a uh, I for yeah I haven't read uh, 
Hunger Games or seen the movies. But all I know is he's like the center of attention in terms of the Hunger Games and Sun involving the actual hunger. Meryl Streep into the woods. As far as I know, I think she's just being like Rumpelstiltskin and Once Upon a Time with the whole all magic comes at a price. Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, let's at least talk about Jamie Foxx and Amazing Spider-Man 2 as Electro. I was, you know, when I saw the movie, I was like, you know, I kind of felt really awkward during his uh, pre-Electro phase. Like, just one saving and advice from Spider-Man and instantly becomes a super obsessed fan. And then when he gets the powers, I'm like, you know, like, before he got his powers, I'm like, really? I mean, base as in really the whole, really, there's no safety protocols at Oscorp. No wonder there's a bunch of cr villains created by them. And you have to wonder how they avoid lawsuits. Well, I guess because they thought Jamie Foxx was dead because he jumped into, he splat. He got into an accident involving the tank of super electric eels. And then, you know, when he becomes the villain, let's face it, all he is is just, NOTICE ME! I'M THE CENTER OF ATTENTION! And I find it a bit ironic, because that's the reason I'm doing this video. To at least get some attention, but... Gonna have to go with... Guardians. Favorite reality show, American Ninja Warrior. Cupcake Wars, Dance Moms, Wipeout, Shark Tank, Master Chef Junior. Well, Dance Moms, really. I haven't even seen the show and it sounds silly. Shark Tank, I've seen a, a bit like after watching the Consuela show. Wipeout, obviously, it's still funny to just see people. Ha 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 ha! Wipeout! MasterChef Junior? Yeah, I haven't seen it, but you have to. But I'm curious how Gordon Ramsay tries to make sure he doesn't swear in front of kids, because let's face it, I don't think crying kids from a swearing chef is good television. American Ninja Warrior. I don't know, it's, it's like, I guess it's good. I haven't seen much of it, though I did find it ridiculous that one challenge where they had to do some performances in a diaper. But I'm going to have to go with Wipeout. Do, 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 do. Favorite talent competition show. We got America's Got Talent, America's Next Top Model, American Idol, The Voice, so you think you can dance and dancing with the stars. So yeah, America, fuck yeah. But yeah, I'm surprised American Idol is still on despite losing most, despite not having the original judges as far as I know, like, um, Sorry, the mind's escape. His name escaping me. You know, the stubborn British dude. He's on the X Factor or something like that. But uh, I'ma say it's between Dancing with the Stars and The Voice, maybe. But uh, let's go with Dancing with the Stars. Now on to favorite movie. We got Guardians of the Galaxy, Maleficent, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Transformers, Age of Extinction, Hunger Games, Mockingjay Part 1, and Amazing Spider-Man 2. Haven't seen Hunger Games the entirety of it. Uh, cause I don't know. Amazing Spider-Man 2, again, it was okay and... Also, just as a quick mention, uh, 
the Green Goblin in this one, the makeup made me think of Rumble Stilt Skin from Once Upon a Time. Transformers Age of Extinction. Well, what else is to say? It's a Michael Bay Transformers flick. And also, when I... But, you know, friends wanted to see it, so I had to come along. And also, the trailer shot with Grimlock in T-Rex form, Breathing Fire. Doesn't that remind you of a certain other, better movie? Just put a banner in front of Grimlock and boom. But let's face it. Guardians of the Galaxy. You get hooked on the feeling. Favorite movie actor. Ben Stiller, Hugh Jackman, Jamie Foxx, Will Arnett, Steve Carell, and Mark Wahlberg. Let's see. Let's just go give it to Hugh Jackman. Wolverine. Wolverines. Actress, Angelina Jolie, Cameron Diaz, Ellie Fanning, Fanning, Megan Fox, Jennifer Garner, and Emma Stone. Well, let's just go to Emma Stone, because, you know. Gwen Stacy, I believe she played. Anyways, on to favorite animated movie. Oh yeah, and look, Grammy, guys. Lego Movies not is in this slot. But we also got Big Hero 6, How to Train Your Dragon 2, Penguins, Rio 2, and the SpongeBob movie. Well, I think we can... Honestly, it's probably uh, going to be between SpongeBob, Lego, Big Hero 6, and How to Train Your Dragon 2. Because, you know... Again, had to be, had to, was forced to watch it, but, you know, I'd say it's okay. I mean, the CGI segment is only there for a short time, and, I don't know. But, yeah. I forgot to mention this back in Favorite Show, but, yeah, it's no strange co- Yeah, it's like, seriously, why, during Korra's runtime, why was it- Never in the nominees for her favorite sh anime cartoon. In fact, if I thought this year if Korra and Spongebob were going to be in the polls... Better I them than me. Sorry, that's just the Simpsons tapped out notification where someone's done with their tasks. Anyways, back to what I was saying. You know, I was hoping at least one year we'd have Korra and Spongebob going and... Eventually, I would do a parody sketch in, involving this image from the magic Theros block during to Nyx. I actually have the picture right here. Let's just wait a bit. Again, sorry for the s slowness. I just clicked on it and, you know, it's... It's like, it's a 2006 computer. It's still good, but a bit laggy. Okay, here we go. So, I was hope you know, I'd do a parody sketch of something like the Journey into Nyx image where we have Elspeth Ajani against Xenagos who became a god. But the parody sketch would be Cora as Elspeth, Leonardo as Ajani, and of course Xenagos being portrayed by Spongebob. Now the thing was, at the time, like a year or two ago, I was like, how would I do, how would I match the body with Xenagos? So I was like, at first I thought, you know, Spongebob in a toga or something like that. But you know, thanks to the movie, I can at least do the superhero design. And basically, in in the description, I'd say something about how the KCA's, his winning streak somehow managed to make him, like, a powerful, all being, again, parody and satire. Like how all the wins just made him very, very powerful compared to the other shows. And it was up to Cora and Leonardo to take him down. And also, the scepter that Xenagos was holding, it would be either a trident or a trident with... 
the KCA blimp on it. But anyways, I meant to say that during the animated, but again, let's just try and give the vote to How to Train Your Dragon 2. Let's just wait for the check mark to be there. No, I don't want to kill it. Kill the page. I'm going to have to start all over or something like that. But, you know, Big Hero 6, it was good. I really liked it. Same with How to Train Your Dragon 2. A good sequel. Good idea to take it five years after the events of the first to show progress. And I guess the TV series Writers of Burke is a good in between is a good series for it to be in between the two movies. Penguins, well as Animat Don Animat's review said, it's probably best if the movie was like uh, either an episode of the show the Penguins were on, or oh thank God, or a TV movie like they've done multiple times. But yeah, Spongebob, it had some good stuff in it for, you know, it had its good moments and there were times where I had to, where I was like cinema sins and picked out some of the flaws and plot holes in it. Lego Movie, well, what else is to say other than everything is awesome. Rio 2, I managed to see on uh, HB, either it was HBO or stars but uh, I'd say it's like an okay sequel but anyways given the vote to how to train your dragon 2 favorite male action star Andrew Garfield in Spider-Man Channing Tatum I swear I think I saw a movie with him Chris Evans Chris Pratt Hugh Jackman and Liam Hensworth Well, let's just uh, give it to Thor. Female action star. Ellen Page. Evan L.G. Lilly. Howie Berry. Zoe Saldana. Scarlett Johansson. And Jennifer Lawrence. Now, it honestly, it might be a... It's a clash between these three. Jennifer Lawrence might win the award because, you know, Hunger Games. Girls. Hold on, just trying to remember. You know. Independent woman. All the ladies. Uh, you know that Destiny Child song. It's been a while since I've last heard it. Scarlett Johansson, Black Widow. Zoe Saldana. Gamora and Uhura. But yeah, gonna give it to... Saldana. Favorite music group. We got Coldplay, Fall Out Boy, Imagine Dragons, One Republic, One Direction, Maroon 5. Now, I only heard a few, few songs from One Republic, Avoided One Direction, Maroon 5, like, okay, Coldplay, okay. Imagine Dragons, eh. I... Sorry, that was an unimportant call. But Imagine Dragons, like, okay, and was slightly sad at Transformers to be like, hey, where's the newest Linkin Park song? And then it's like, oh, Imagine Dragons is doing the music. Eh, okay. But Fall Out Boy, gonna have to give to for, you know, light up. The My Songs Know What You Did in the Dark and Immortals. Those were those are catchy. Male singer Blake Shelton, Bruno Mars, Justin Timberlake, Sam Smith, Pharrell Williams, and wow, Nick Jonas, who's hosting it. I swear, if we he wins, that we're gonna experience a narcissistic trip or something like that. Just you know, something like that. But let's see. To me, it's between 
these for Sam Smith. He's good and because I don't watch music videos that often in radio. Um, he sounds like a black singer. Justin Timberlake. Mm. I liked Mirrors and I guess TKO. But it's between Bruno Mars and Pharrell Williams. But gonna have to go with Bruno Mars for Uptown Funk. Now on to female singer. We got Ariana Grande, Beyonce, Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, Savannah Gomez, and Nicki Minaj. Now let's see. Nicki Minaj, like, okay, though. Anaconda was like, uh, is okay. To an extent. Savannah Gomez. I kind of uh, liked Heart Wants What It Wants. Like some kind of symbolism for her relationship with Justin Bieber or something like that. Taylor Swift is, o is okay. Is good and okay with Blank Space and Shake It Off. Beyonce, K. Perry, Ariana Grande. Well, let's just give the vote to Ariana Grande. Because I know my, a friend of mine will like this. The same one who dragged me and my other one to Spongebob. But, you know, friends are like that. Song of the Year. All About That Bass. Bang Bang. Dark Horse. Shake It Off. Problem. And Fancy. Um. Well, I'm about to give it to Dark Horse. Because at least in the... I kind of liked how they did the whole middle, medieval times witch thing in that in the one award show. Though I kind of found it weird with the Egypt theme, but I guess still had some magic. I guess because you know, Egypt, multiple gods. Anyways, new artists: Five Seconds of Summer, Echo Smith, Fifth Harmony, Megan Trainer, Jesse J, and Iggy Azalea. Um, well, the only joke I got here is she's really all about that bass and the one with Higgy, that one clip from Tropic Thunder where, like, I saw this while browsing Facebook and it's like the, either, it's either a Vine or GIF or GIF where it's like Higgy singing and then the one actor says, you know, the one one where he talks to Robert Downey Jr. You're white. You're white or something like that. Because, you know, she's trying to be like a black artist. But I guess I'll go with... But yeah, it's probably between Iggy and Megan who's going to win the actual award. So, I guess give it to Iggy. I don't know. My second choice would have been Jesse J, I guess. And that's it. Let's see, we'll see what the results are, and of course the video where it's like, uh, where, you know, we see who wins, and my, you know, basically the prediction video, this, and the results being the one that'll be like after Mar the award show. Anyways, Samurai Jack, see you later, dude.